Hey folks, this is the first in a series of intro videos to Keppel. Now, Keppel's obviously in an alpha state, like I mentioned before, uh, but it's got to the point where people definitely want to play with it and have a go, so I thought I'd put some of these videos together. Hopefully they won't change too drastically over the coming months. Uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is just getting Keppel set up and running uh, a basic demo. Now, I'd love to be able to package this up in some lovely way in the future, uh, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to just follow the little guide um, on my uh, Keppel repo. And so basically, let's just follow through it. Now, there are a number of requirements of different Lisp libraries, but they're all going to be handled by Quick Lisp. I, I'm going to assume a few things. Basically, you're going to be using Slime, whether it's with um, Emacs or SlimV with Vim. I'm afraid I, I don't know that, uh, Vim, so I can't really show that working. Uh, you're going to be using Quick Lisp because that's just the best way of getting software in Common Lisp these days. I'm going to be using SBCL as my distro because it is incredibly good at optimizing stuff and it's just what I've always used. I found it to be fantastic and the compiler can do some really cool things. Um, I also recommend uh, CCL uh, if you're interested. And yes, do feel free to comment on other um, distros that you found to be useful. At the moment, this doesn't work on OS X. I mentioned this in one of the other videos, but um, I've had real difficulty getting this going. So if you do get this working on OS X, please let me know how you did it. I'm really interested in getting this into the repository. If you can share your fix and pull request, let me know. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. First thing we need to go and do is go into our quick list local repository, local projects folder. The reason we're going to stick everything there just makes it way easier to load everything. Now we're going to have to clone three libraries. Uh, they're all from my um, GitHub uh, page. And the first is obviously Keppel itself. So let's get that. And while this is cloning, we also need to get uh, Vario and Temporal Functions. Vario is the Lisp to GLSL compiler. Um, and temporal functions is a macro that generates temporal state machines uh, with this kind of neat little syntax. Uh, this is way more important, but this is also used in a couple of things. It's worth having it in there. Keppel expects it to be found. Okay. In the future, those two libraries are also going to be um, in QuickList, but for now, they're just something you're going to have to grab yourself. Nearly done. These ones are nice and small, so they only take a second. Brilliant. At this stage, we should have enough to load the Keppel um, project itself. Now, Keppel su technically supports multiple different backends. A backend is something that creates the GL context, creates the window, and handles input events from various devices. At the moment, the only backend we have is SDL, but I'd love to extend this to use other things as well, maybe GLFW, especially GLOP. I would love to get that uh, working across all platforms because that's one less C dependency that we would need to get going. But we need a backend, uh, so we're going to grab one of those in a minute. I just need to get Emacs up. Now, I have to do this in a slightly weird way on my machine, so just ignore that. Um, it's because of the graphics card I'm running on this laptop. Okay, so let's load up Slime. So that's MX Slime. And now we should be able to, actually let's, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I'm in the right directory. So I'm gonna say um, MX Slime set default directory. And I'm gonna set this to quick list, local projects, and we're done. Now I'm gonna quick load Keppel. And this is going to take a little while. This first compile is fairly slow. Um, and what we'll end up having is the full system set up, but without a backend. So at this point, we won't be able to run any of our examples. But we're just going to see that it completes. Normally, what you do is QL quick load Keppel default, and it loads the whole thing, including all the, include, um, it loads SDL and all the optional modules. But, we're going to do this step by step. So if you have any issues, you'll know exactly which one caused the issue. There we've got Keppel. So let's continue. 
Like I mentioned, we need a backend and we're going to be using SDL. Now the library is available through Quicklisp, but we also need to get the C library that it wraps. So let's clear this. Now this is obviously distro dependent, like that obviously is uh, operating system and distro dependent. Um, because I'm on Ubuntu, it'll be something like sudo apt get install with SDL2 and then one of these. Um, I've already got it installed it. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to do that again. On OS X, I hope you're using a package manager there, so whatever you're using should be able to get hold of this. And on Windows, um, you can find the link here to go and download the DLL. You're going to have to put it somewhere where Lisp is able to find it, so on one of the, one of the um, environment paths. Or if you're feeling lazy and you just want to check this stuff works, you can actually dump the exe in the same folder as your um, Lisp executable. So in this case, it will be, say, sbcl.exe is in this folder. I can dump it next to that. That rules out the possibility of it not finding it. But it's also a little hacky. I must admit, though, on my Windows machine, I've done exactly that, because I only ever load into Windows to run games and to test Kebble for Windows. OK, so once we've installed the C library, we should be able to go here and say QR quick load um, backend SDL. Now it's going to load. At this point, we should actually be able to run an example. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to browse to Quicklisp, Local Projects, Kepl, Examples, and Moving Triangles. And this is all the code for this. It's a very simple example, one I've shown a good few times. I'm going to clear this. I'm going to start the Kepl rep. Now this is a 320 by, uh, no, 340 by 2, yeah, 320 by 240, sorry. Uh, window. It's small because a lot of people's uh, laptops might still have old screens and I want them to have something that's a sane size by default, uh, but it's really easy to increase this size. But it works quite well for while I'm doing a screencast to have it small. So I'm going to make this always on top. At the moment, what you're probably going to see is this is, looks like um, it, the application isn't responding. And that's actually true. It's not responding to any input events. You'll see on Windows immediately, you'll start getting the uh, little spinning icon saying that this isn't responding. Uh, don't worry about that. Just carry on with the instructions. So now we're going to say in package Kevl. We're going to go over to our code on the left. And we're going to control C, control K, which compiles everything. And then we're going to say run loop. And we should immediately see that we have something drawing. And if I jump over to the left, we can actually check that um, we're getting you know, the full features by changing some code, recompiling, seeing that it's had an effect, we'll change it back and recompile again. OK. And when we're done, we're going to say stop loop. I'm going to take this off always being a top for now. But what we've got at this point is Kepler running. Feel free to stop and play with some other examples. Uh, the examples have a note near the top of them in, in the comments telling if you need any of the other dependencies, um, like the image loading or model loading stuff. Let's not worry about that for now. In fact, we're going to have to install that next. OK, so we've got um, SDL. All these examples are now valid, included our, including our moving triangles one and the ray march. Let's get our image helper. Now, what we actually use in the background here is a C library called Devil. Um, it's fantastic. And there's a, also an excellent wrapper for this in Common Lisp. To get hold of this, it's the same drill as before. So I'm going to say sudo apt get install live devil. And this would be what I'm installing. Again, on OS X, you can use your package manager and on Windows. Uh, follow the link and go and dump it in the correct place. Once this is installed, we can then go back again and say QL quick load Kepl image helper. Oops, I've written that wrong and you can tell that I've just uh, made these changes today. Ah, it should have been Kepl image helper. Oh, of course, I've said in package, not quick load. There we are. Now image helper is valid and ready. We could uh, try out some of the other examples. I'm going to skip that for now because just in the for the sake of uh, brevity. So at this point, Bloom and Cube Map should now work. Again, we've got another model, um, some model helpers. This uses the excellent Asimp library, so we're going to need to install that. 
you've guessed the drill already. It's, yeah, use your package manager, use whatever you've got. I'm not going to show you. You've got the idea already. Um, and follow the link for Windows. And this will get the last number of examples working, including instancing, normal mapping, refraction. Um, it's not that these things need models, but the examples use 3D models because it's just more interesting. All right. And now the following steps are actually telling you how to run an example, which is something we've done already. So we are done. We are set up with Keppel. If you have any problems, let me know. I'm not going to be super fast on issues just because um, my day job's awesome and I spend a lot of time there. Uh, but when I can, I will be taking care of those. If you've got any questions, if you've got any things you want changed, if you've got any pull requests, send them to me. I'd love to see them. I'll try and answer them either with videos or via email. Keep them coming. Thank you so much for looking, and uh, I'll be back with more tutorials soon. Bye.